Good morning, God's beloved, and welcome to worship with University Christian Church. I'm Reverend Megan Pegler, the senior minister here, and I'm so glad to have you all joining with us online this morning. <clears throat> I'd like to take a moment of personal priv privilege and thank you all for um, praying for me and Steve through our COVID illness. And I can tell you from personal experience, try to avoid getting it if you can. It is not fun, but I'm feeling much better. So thank you for your prayers. Um, because of the current Omicron surge, we will be worshiping online through the end of January. We previously announced that we'd be worshiping online at least through next Sunday, and we're going to go ahead and extend that through the month of January to allow the numbers to come down for us to possibly get into a safer stage. Since we are all worshiping online, I would appreciate it if you would take a moment to sign in at the link that's in the description of this video. You can find it on our website as well. On our website, you can also find the worship bulletin. A couple of announcements about upcoming online events. We have a spiritual gifts discussion group that will be starting on Zoom next Monday, the 17th. It'll be three Mondays in a row at 6.30 and it will be a time for us to talk about what are spiritual gifts, what are my spiritual, spiritual gifts. We'll have a spiritual gifts inventory and work through some of that together. If you've done that sort of work before, this would be a nice refresher and a good chance to talk with a group of people who are um, interested in examining the same sort of thing. And also, on January 20th, Reverend Chelsea is going to lead us in a discussion of Blessed are the crazy. It's a Thursday. It's our Thursday uh, monthly book group, and that will be at 630 as well. Now, let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. This morning's call to worship are some selections from Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Worship God in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. May God give strength to God's people. May God bless the world with peace.
Together, wherever you are, please join me in the litany of praise. The voice of God resounds upon the water. The Spirit of the Lord hovers over the stream. The Son of God is named Beloved. All who worship shout out, Glory! Ascribe to the Lord majesty and strength. Let us worship God in holy splendor. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan, your voice affirmed your love in Jesus for the healing of the human race and all creation. By water and word, you lovingly invite us into the same life-giving mission. You call us beloved, but we forget our identities as your precious children. We act selfishly, denying the ways we hurt others and harm your world. Create in us a new heart. Reconcile us to one another and bless us with your peace. We pray for the body of Christ. May your word spark our lives with truth and joy as we love and serve. We pray for all leaders and peoples of the earth. May your justice provoke us to shape a peaceful world where all work for the common good. We pray for the well-being of your creation. May your goodness startle us to care for that which is too often desecrated and exploited. We pray for all who suffer grief or sickness of any kind. May your tender presence abide with us and hasten our healing. We pray for all who lack the essentials of life. May your righteousness raise us up to seek together respect and dignity for all. May your spirit, moving like a stream of water flowing from its source, work in us this day to realize your vision of a world made new in Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So, kids. I wish that I could see you right here in front of me, but I'm so glad that you're with us online today. Today's Bible lesson that we're going to hear in just a few minutes tells about when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River. And the story goes that the sky opened up and the Spirit of God came down and it looked like a dove. It rested on Jesus and Everyone who was there heard a voice from heaven say, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. Baptism is a way that we show that we belong to God and that we're a part of God's family. And baptism is one way that God shows us how very beloved we are. In some churches, babies are baptized. In our church, people are baptized when they're older, partly so that we can remember it. If you haven't been baptized yet, ask your family, your parents, your older siblings maybe, or your cousins, aunts and uncles, ask them about when they were baptized and what they remember from that and what it means to them. It's really good to talk about this stuff together. Baptism reminds us that there's nothing we can do to earn God's love or approval because we already have it. 
God loves all of us, no matter what. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us and calling us yours. Help us remember that good news every day. Amen. Our scripture today is from the Gospel of Luke, the third chapter. We'll be reading verses 15 through 17 and 21 and 22. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Here ends today's scripture.
Throughout my life, a story that has given me a great deal of comfort is one that comes from kind of a mythos about Martin Luther. Whenever he found himself in trouble, and this man very often found himself in trouble, he would take his hand, place it on his forehead, and say, remember your baptism. Friends, I wish that I was standing here in this pulpit to tell you about a time when I was terrified or worried or in a tough spot, and I was able to use the old theologian and reformer's trick, and it brought me relief, or it gave me an immediate solution to a problem. But I have to confess, not once have I ever literally remembered my baptism in the midst of a hard time. If I'm honest, I only remember my baptism when I'm prompted to, when I am present at someone else's baptism, or when I was ordained, or when I'm preaching on baptism of the Lord Sunday. But I do literally remember my baptism. And in my Presbyterian seminary, I was one of the few who actually did. I was seven years old. A very, probably shocking to you, but I was a very precocious child who decided on her own that she was ready to be baptized and took it upon herself to talk with the Free Will Baptist minister about it and let him know just how and why she was ready to be baptized. <laughs> the water was not warm in the baptismal pool, and I was a Floridian, so I only deal in bath water temperatures. Who knows really how warm or cold it really was. And the minister, his name was Eddie Hicks, he had a big belly. And I remember elbowing him in his belly as he was explaining to the assembled body just why he was baptizing someone who was younger than our typical person who was baptized. And I kept my eyes open the whole time, and the water fell out of my ears, and I heard the sound of the congregation clapping, and my granny and my mama were waiting for me with a towel, and they rushed me back to a Sunday school room to change my clothes, and then there was a potluck with fried chicken, and there were certainly no flapping of a dove's wings. The door to heaven didn't open. There was no voice. And it's just a really cute story about a little girl who felt the conviction to join God fam God's family before her church's polity directed that she really should formally. And here I am, and I grew up, and I'm a preacher, and I'm preaching about it. But when I remember my baptism, when I really remember my baptism, I can't help but reflect upon how that little girl was so convicted. She was so swayed by the grace of God. That response to the call on her life couldn't be delayed, not even by another three years. And friends, in taking this time to really remember my baptism, I am overcome in this remembrance. And I wonder if perhaps that's why I don't remember it very often. Not because it was an experience that was so different from anyone else's, but because it was an extraordinary act that I still can't understand. Even if I remember each detail I don't comprehend what happened that day. Even as I have studied and professed and moved through the world as a Christian, as a minister, there was something in that moment that I came up from the water, took that first kind of involuntary gasp of breath that I didn't expect and that I can't articulate even still 30 years later. I have to make myself comfortable in the mystery of that moment. But friends, I have a tendency to overthink things. And I wonder if being asked to remember my baptism is akin, in a way at least, 
to being asked to remember our birth. Now for me, that is actually impossible. For all of us, that is actually impossible. But in the same way that we celebrate all expressions of Christianity, there are at least a few of us who physically cannot remember their baptisms. Some of us may have actually been baptized twice because we didn't remember the first baptism. But no, I don't remember my birth. But I have, even without memory of that event, always known to whom I belong. And I think that maybe that's what we are intended to remember. Beyond the temperature of the water, or feeling embarrassed about the minister's words, or the fried chicken reception after, or if you were an infant who screamed all the way through it, or a surly preteen who felt in some way obligated to your family to do it, no matter how you came to be baptized, you have responded to a call that God has placed on your life. You have joined the family of love that God already had for you. Whether you went through pastor's classes before the event or confirmation after, or maybe you never did either of those things, you were sealed into your identity as a beloved child of God with whom God is well pleased. And the most beautiful thing, I think, about baptism is that it isn't contingent upon any set of rules that we can create on earth. In fact, the only role we really play in it is to raise our hands, to desire to respond to the good work and the love that God has already called us to. And God takes it from there. And even if we don't have the same experience as Jesus, we are claiming our identity as Jesus's followers, formally joining the fold to which we are called those who are God's beloved, those with whom God is well pleased. Friends, if you haven't been baptized but would like to explore it, please reach out to Pastor Megan to discuss it. And don't worry about being too, I mean, well, anything <laughs> to discuss baptism, if this is something you feel compelled to explore. The greatest beauty in God's church is the diversity that we bring to it. And as disciples, we all celebrate our identity in Christ, even if that is the only thing upon which we can agree. So my siblings, I implore you in this time to remember your baptism. Whether it is a literal remembrance, it is a forward thinking to an event that you're considering, or it is a deep knowing of who you belong to. And siblings, beyond all of this thinking, I hope you remember your deepest identity and are able to act from that authentic place in all of your encounters now and forever. Amen. We are the recipients of many gifts from God, including the gift of baptism. In response to these myriad gifts, we are called to be disciples, giving to others in ways large and small through our fiscal and human resources. As the calendar turned to a new year, I read a newspaper article about giving to oneself by adopting spiritual resolutions. Resolutions that will help your soul as well as your discipleship in these unpredictable and trying times. What spiritual resolutions would you make this year? What gift will you give yourself so that you are better able to receive God's gifts and to give to others in return. Will you take intentional time to reflect daily or weekly? 
When you wake up each morning, will you engage with the off-screen world before you look at a screen? Will you find one new small way to help care for creation? Will you more intentionally keep the Sabbath, finding rest for yourself and time for worship and prayer? Will you be more encouraging to those around you, more patient, more forgiving? Will you pray intentionally for our nation and our state and our political leaders, especially the ones you don't like? Will you learn more about racial justice and commit to acting in support of justice? What will your spiritual resolution be for 2022? As we consider how we can respond to God's covenant, and as we take time right now to listen to beautiful music, please consider what you can resolve to do in 2022 that serves your soul so that you can also serve your church community in the wider world. sacrifice at your table, giving thanks for all that we have, sharing our treasures with the needy within our community. We pray that you find favor in these gifts and that through the act of sharing, we may be further stirred to service. May each act of sacrifice become magnified, stirring others to action, furthering the efforts to help the needy. We ask humbly that you instill within our hearts and minds courage confidence and diligence so that we may act as you have taught, providing for the meek and suffering. Blessings, glory, and honor be to God. Amen.
Siblings, we are gathered at this table together in the climax of our service, and as today we celebrate the baptism of our Lord, we remember our baptisms, and we remember that there are two sacraments or ordinances that we celebrate in our congregation. One happens once in our life, and one happens each week. Friends, we are gathered around this table today to remember our baptisms, to be fed spiritual food and physical food so that we can go out and feed others. Siblings, I invite you that as you partake in this feast, you remember the bounty and the abundance from which you have come and who you really are. Friends, the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. According to his commandment, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. Let us pray. Lord, as we eat this bread and drink this cup, let us remember how through Jesus you walked among us. And you are not only there when we are at our best, but you are there when we are at our worst. Your love is always present, always steadfast. We pray for your constant presence in our lives to continue to transform us into your likeness. In your son's name we pray, amen. amen. today with us virtually and we would like to extend an invitation if you do not currently have a community that you can call your spiritual home we invite you to explore membership here at University Christian Church please feel free to reach out to the church office or to either of our ministers if you'd like to discuss becoming a member here as you consider that let us sing our final hymn for the day
Siblings, go out into the world in peace, remembering exactly who you are through your baptism and through your relationship with God and your church. And may the blessings of God be upon your spirit this day and indeed all the days of your life. Alleluia. Amen. Thank you.